Satellite networking, the way to the future. Why? Well, let's find out together. Today's class is satellite communication networking. We are going to cover very, very interesting topics today. We are going to begin with the satellite communication networking definition. We are going to explore the infrastructure of the satellite communication. We will also explore the satellite types, overview the satellite orbits, the satellite frequency bands, and we will end up with the satellite internet. Let's begin. Satellite communication. In the simplest definition, the satellites are just relay station in the space for transmission, for voice, video, and data communication. They are ideally suited to meet the global communication requirement for military, government, and also commercial organization. Also, the transmission via satellite communication can bypass the existing ground station, which is often limited and unreliable in many parts of the world. Let's talk a little bit about the infrastructure of the satellite communication networking. It has three parts, primarily the satellite, which in the space, and the source ground station and the destination ground station. The communication between the source ground station and the satellite in the space, it's called the uplink. However, the communication from the satellite in the space down to the destination ground station is called the downlink. Those are the two terms you need to remember them, the uplink and the downlink. When we talk about the satellite types, we have different types. They started with navigation satellites, which we surely we call it the GPS. We also have the other kind of satellite that we use it for observations, for weather, atmosphere. And the third kind, which is a communication, when we transmit and receive video services, for example. Satellite orbits is very important topic to understand it. We have a three orbits, a three major orbits. The lowest one, which is called LEO, low Earth orbit. The next one is MEO, the medium Earth orbit. And the third one is the geostationary orbit. So let's explore each one individually. The LEO, which is a low orbit, it's around 200 to 160 kilometers above Earth's surface. It's definitely used by international space agencies like NASA, ESA, and others. And recently, the Internet Service Providers uh, started using that orbit as well. And we'll talk about in a bit. It's around the 10 to 100 uh, second delay. The second orbit, which is MEO, medium Earth orbit, around the 10 to 20,000 kilometers above Earth's surface, used for GPS services mostly. When it comes to the geostationary orbits, around the 35 to 36 kilometer above Earth's surface and is used by certain satellites for the video services and others. When you look at all of the satellites in the orbits, you're going to find that by far United States has the vast majority of the satellite in the world. What are we using when it comes to satellite communications? We have different frequencies, as you can tell, the VHF and the UHF for the TV, and before that for the AM and the FM for the radio. But when it comes to satellite, we're using from 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz, and they started going beyond that recently. But the most important thing for you to remember the bands. So when you deal with satellites, you're always going to hear about the C band, the KU band, the KE band. Just to remember that when you start dealing with this technology. The satellite internet is considered by far as the most interesting topic of the technologies these days. We have three companies, Starlink, based in the United States. We have one web, it's joined between uh, United Kingdom and India, and of course, uh, Project Keeper from Amazon, which is based on United States as well. Those three companies are the major internet service provider as we speak in because of the technology they are using. There were some before them, but the technology that they offered is far beyond and more advanced than the one before them. So what exactly they are offering? The satellite internet is a good option. If you live, of course, in a rural area where the cable, the fiber, and the DSL internet providers are not available. The best satellite internet service over up to 300 megabit per second as a download speed. However, they cap 
the bandwidth whenever you start to go and beyond that limit. The internet from the satellite providers, also you have to remember that's a little bit pricey, more expensive. The satellite internet, the one we were just talking about, the three companies like Starlink, offer around 150 to 500 megabit per second. The one using less technology like Usenet, is offering up to 25 megabit per second. Of course, both of them not compared to the cable companies or the other internet service provider like the phone companies when they offer around one gig. However, it's a very good option when you don't have the option for the cable companies or the telephone companies. So what are the concerns that we have uh, when it comes to satellite internet? Wow, what are these things around our beloved planet? That's what is called the space debris. The space debris, or commonly known as space junk, is considered to be any human-made object in the orbit, not serving anything. So basically, when we're launching satellites and or we're fixing something in the ISS or other space vehicles, we tend to dump stuff in the space, but we leave it. Hopefully one day it will hit Earth after 20 years, after 3 years, 30 years, However, that doesn't happen between the day and the night. So they get accumulated in the space, as you can see. When you factor the velocity of all of these debris in the orbit, it actually, it can pose a threat to the currently healthy and operating space system. Basically, it can actually harm all of the other satellites that we are using or the ISS or other vehicles that we're using it for good purposes. So it's dangerous. Back in the old days in the 1970, it was a scientist who was named Donald Kessler. He already predicted that the number of the artificial satellite in the Earth orbit will increase and the probability of the collisions between satellites also increase. So accumulating the space debris can lead us toward the catastrophic that could make portion of the Earth's orbit inaccessible and in turn, collision will lead to other collision leading the growth of a belt of debris around the earth. I just figured that you guys need to know about this stuff. So what are the solutions for that? The Space Force, which is the newest branch of the military that has been established in the United States around a few years ago, they have a control over all of the satellites in the sky. So whenever they feel that there's gonna be any collision, they try to avoid that to happen. The Space Force, offer decision maker military options to achieve national objective as well. Commercial space junk. Remember, all of this junk in the space has a lot of gold and silver. So the commercial space junk is finding ways to remove the least a small amount of this space junk. It should be at the top global priorities these days and it's gonna make a lot of money for those commercial companies. Companies such as Orbit Guardians and Clear Space are more are racing as we're speaking to develop the technology to clean up the space debris. We have uh, covered the satellite communication networking principles. We overview the infrastructure of the satellite communication. We explore together the satellite types, the orbits, and the frequency bands. And we have talked about also satellite internet as a service. Thank you very much for your time.